who Essie has been so tough. They can hurt you from every point on the floor. Wanabu pounds it away. And Olgar puts an exclamation point on set number two. Mauricio serves. Sounds like a cannon. Lots of weapons who can put the ball away. You need to do that if you want to win a national title. And that's what the goal is for USC. It's the second round of the NCAA Women's Volleyball Tournament. Inside the Galen Center, six seed USC hosts the Cal State Northridge Matadors. Taking a look at how these two teams reached this point yesterday, Cal State Northridge in five sets upset 12th ranked Colorado State. USC beat New Hampshire. Hi everybody, thanks for joining us. I'm Ann Marie Anderson, alongside NCAA champion Holly McPeak. And Holly, uh, one of the challenges for Northridge today is going to be trying to contain USC's middles. Absolutely. Alexis Olga, senior middle blocker. She's always been known for a block at six foot five, but she's much improved offensively. Tenth in the country, hitting 438 offensively for the Trojans. Those are huge numbers out of the middle. On the other side of the net, Casey Hinger, she's a junior middle blocker. She also attacks from the right side. She leads this Matador team in kills. And if you want, you'll see she is their emotional leader. This Cal State Northridge team is so exciting to watch. It's the first Matador team to win an NCAA tournament match. But we're going to have to deal with the heavy heat of USC serve. First serve coming up right after the break. Welcome back to Los Angeles, round two of the NCAA tournament. About to get underway inside the Galen Center. 60 USC host Cal State Northridge. Cal State Northridge picked up the first ever NCAA tournament win yesterday, and their head coach is one with a lot of experience, Jeff Dork, a legend in volleyball. Absolutely. Three-time Olympian, gold medal setter from Seoul. And he is a teaching coach. He takes pride in teaching volleyball at the highest level. And he really gives a lot of credit to his coaching staff, Susie Terusa and John Price. And it's interesting, you look at Jeff Stork, an incredible player who we've all known followed throughout the years. On the other side for USC, their head coach, Mick Haley, also a legend in the game, a three-time national coach of the year. Mick Haley has coached at every level, had a long career at Texas, then with the national team, and here at SE. He's a recruiting machine, too. He's got some talented athletes, especially on this particular team. Taking a look at the season comparison between these two teams, we've been following Northridge all year a bit from afar because they've dip their heads into the pole a bit. They got as high as 21. Yes, they are a well-coached team, really fun to watch, good energy, and they really push themselves in the gym daily to compete at a high level, mucking off Hawaii in five sets and and really make a big push this season, putting their name on the map. Yeah, and as for USA, well, certainly they've been among the elite of the Pac-12 all year, along with Stanford and Washington. They uh, occupied the top echelon of the conference. Well, I think USC has really improved the last month of this season. Their numbers have improved. Elise Redden's addition on the right side attack has really helped. You see kills per set, national rankings 10th, Assist 10th, hitting percentage 13th with the 281, blocks 275, 23rd. Blocks for some reason in USC, always an area that I think they can improve. Well, we mentioned Alexis Olgaard at the beginning of the broadcast. She certainly anchors the blocking portion of their defense. But yesterday, she had an offensive day that was really impressive. Six for six, hit a perfect 1,000. You never hear that. Two blocks. She was on fire. But it was interesting that McHaley had his team watch the earlier match yesterday. 
the Northridge Colorado State match and had them prepare their own scouting report. I like that. That puts responsibility on the players on the team. They sit there together, observe, see what they learn. They're the ones going to battle out on the floor, not Coach McKaylee, although he's a, the support system on the sideline. Yeah, and Natalie Haglin, the libero for USC, no surprise, one of the best in terms of that scouting report, we're told. Doesn't surprise me. Ready to get underway, and a little bit of a surprise that Santa Bricio is not starting serving for USC. First swing from Northridge taken by Mahina Haina. High hands, USC block. There's some high hands to swing at. Finds a way to put the ball away. So interesting that Mick Haley decided not to start Bricio swing for the first time all year that I've seen. I'm a little surprised. I think he just wanted, he knew Jeff Stork was waiting for that, don't you think? Probably. What a boot. Hole in the block. Goes through it, the ball comes back over. Schwer makes herself available. Wanu blocked. And the ball is put down by Sydney Gedrin. That's the setter who's a big difference maker for the Metadors. Absolutely. Sydney Gedrin is an offensive minded setter. She sees an opportunity, puts it away. Heine serving for Northridge. They make Bricio handle the first ball. From the backcourt, Haglin digs it. Bricio. Takes her first swing of the day. Yeah, she's scored. I think Northridge is playing USC very well, getting some good t touches. Finally, Samantha Bricio finds the corner open. Natalie Haglin, three-time Pac-12 libero of the year. That's incredible in itself. Serving. Goes down the line, takes Northridge out of the system, and it's going to be a free ball for USC. Perfect pass, Olgaard begs for it. But Brito flies in. That's a combo we do not see very often from USC. This ball is set way inside. Samantha Brisa gets her feet there, one blocker in front of her. Tough to stop. That's what I love about Mick Haley is that he knows what you think you're gonna get from them and so he will make you get something different. Beautiful set outside, it's a one-on-one -on -one blocking opportunity and there's Hanger. Casey Hinger had a blocker, Samantha Bricio in front of her. Saw those hands, high off the hands, smart swing. They've been working on Samantha Bricio's blocking all season long. She's such an excellent player that that's one area that she openly admits she still needs to work on. Back to Wambu. Outside. Bricio, another kill. Samantha Bricio, number two in white, so effective at finding that seam between the two defenders. It splits them perfectly. First three kills of this match are by Samantha Bricio. Wanabu has rotated out now, and Alice Pizzagola in the serve. Outside. Nice high. Stacey Dinson gets a kill. Cal State Northridge, very effective going with the high swings. There's Casey Hinger from the backcourt. Serving. Shaw does not put that pass where she wants it to. Makes up for it. Cal State Northridge had USC right where they wanted them, got them out of system free ball play. They did not shift over to get that ball down the line right back. The setter was already releasing. Here's Mantha Bricio on back line. Northridge receiving with three passers. They all took a step back. And Holly, this is the key for USC. The two matches this season where they didn't serve well, and I'm not saying where that's happening just yet, were the losses to Arizona and Washington State. They must serve well today. Absolutely, USC needs to put the pressure on Cal State Northridge in order to control this match. Clearly, they're going to make Bricio pass a lot of balls. They've served her just about every time. Outside, again, high off hands. And a net violation on USC's Alexis Olgaard. Little over eager. Looks like on the turn, Olgaard got the net. 
Rondado serves again. Haglin, beautiful pass. And it's Elise Ruttons. Ball is dug straight up into the chin of Renazzo. Elise Ruttons, number 11 on white in the right of your screen. So good at splitting the defender. She's been an amazing addition to this USC lineup. That was a really hard shot to Rondazzo's face. Olga, serve. Back all the way pin again, gets a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, but Sarah Shaw shuts it down. Sarah Shaw, phenomenal solo block. She's left all by herself. Great block move, hands over the net. Tied up at six piece and set number one here inside the Galen Center. Uh oh Schreier puts it away. It's not all Samantha Riccio from the back line. Alexis Olgard puts a nice serve as well from the backcourt. Yeah, it's an interesting serve. Kind of a little bit of a skip hop and then a float. Well, kind of a float. From the backcourt, no touch. Another point as Alexis Olgard continues to serve. One of the goals for USC is to get Cal State Northridge out of system. They feel like they have the advantage when Northridge is out of system. 4-0 run for USC. Middle. And that's going to end it there as Sam Call from the middle for the Matadors. We saw Sam Call yesterday. Very effective out of the middle. Quick arm able to turn by the blocker. Brittany Graff in to serve for Cal State Northridge. Selfless player opening to Jeff Stork. Was an outside hitter for this team for years. This year, better serving a DS role. She said no problem. Yes. Ball is up. And it just got away from her a bit. High over the block for Allen. Ebony Wan who comes back up front. For USC, Haley Crone comes in serve and set. Another one on one. They're getting a lot of one on one opportunities. When Northridge pa passes the ball well, they're able to do that. Natalie Allen, one in front of her, sees the tip in front of Natalie Hagman. Smart shot. Allen serve goes long. And the issue with playing USC certainly is that any error you make starts to get magnified as you get deeper into the match, into the set. They're trying to serve them tough. They have to. Beautiful dig. Wanabu finds a corner. Ebony Wanabu, she was hot last night with 10 kills, hitting 7-14. This time, finds that deep corner with power. We saw a lot of line last night, but that time finds the open corner. Wanabu, Pac-12 freshman of the year. Her efforts, and she's another one, Holly, who I think has gotten stronger as the season's gone along. Definitely, Ebony Wanabu finding her offensive range. Getting her feet there, getting more confident against the size of Division I volleyball. Middle. Schreier is dug. And Jeff Stork loves how offensive his setter is. Just two swings at it to get a net call off of USC. Sydney Gedrin, she's a lefty, six feet, very athletic. Sees the opening first. Natalie Allen, what a dig. Not my team slowing that ball down. Back to Wanabu. Another big dig, but Schreier getting a lot of action in the middle on over dig Still passes. Hannah Schreier's worked so hard all season long. You see number 14 right there. Mick Haley telling her what she needs to do better. He is on her, but she worked hard every single day for him. Hagler serve down the line. Balls up, block is tight. And Randazzo didn't realize her setter was right behind her. Little bit of a traffic jam for Northridge, but they are digging a lot of balls, playing some smart defense. Nice 
Hagelin continues to serve down the line. USC looking a little discombobulated there. Oh, Bricio. Boy, she's smooth. Ball's chased down. Free ball. The women of Troy. Wanabu is dug, but Northridge out of system. And goes long, no touch for Trojans. The thing I'm most impressed with so far for Cal State Northridge is the defense. They're getting the blocks where they need to be. They're digging around it, getting some really nice touches and second opportunities. Throwing outside, Abricio. Abricio has that one get away from her a bit. Yeah, Alan, to your point, I mean, one of them's got one kill. They're able to control. There's so many one-on-one -on -one opportunities for Northridge. They're doing great things. Two blockers every time on Wanabu, trying to slow her down. That's a key. Cox and Brighthouse. Yesterday, Cal State Northridge in their fifth appearance in the NCAA tournament picked up their first ever win. Came from behind in the fifth set. Wow. Dramatic for victory for them in the NCAA tournament. The second match of the night was a little less exciting because USC was dominant. As a team, they hit 571 and just put on a team offensive show against New Hampshire. Yeah, Cal State Northridge, though, a very different team than the team that USC faced last night. You and I both so impressed by how smooth they are. What impresses you the most about the Matadors after watching them last night? Well, I think they've got lots of offensive weapons. They've got depth. Um, you know, I like the way they play. They don't play traditional rotation like everybody else. They've got a lot of emotional fire and chemistry. You see as a team how they move and interact with one another, and it's exciting to watch. I wonder if we see them set to pin, to the, back to the pin as much as they're doing tonight. I mean, they really seem to be... Uh, Kind of setting quite a slide, but back to that pin quite a bit. We did see that earlier in the match when they dominated the first two sets. The Colorado State took that third and fourth set. They're playing extremely well. Yeah. Doing a great job. Our setter, Sydney Gedron, out of three seniors on the team. Pizza Segola serve goes to Hinger. Again, Hinger. Oh, behind the setter. State Northridge team in kills and she worked so hard on her passing she's been in the passing lineup probably the last eight matches and you see why perfect pass and a nice kill to terminate tough serve there as well Abricio from the right broken play a bit back that one, no touch as you try to go for hands. Natalie Allen struggling a little bit for Cal State Northridge. Not able to get on top of the ball. Seeing a big buck in front of her every time. Bricio back to the service line again. Just her first serve. And that ball long will send Bricio back again to the line. Ball is on. And Northridge with an opportunity here. They trail by five and set one. So far, Samantha Bricio has not got on a roll with her serve, and that's a good thing for Kelsey Northridge. That's a real difference maker for this team all year long. Olgard found a block waiting for her. Pizza Gola gets the benefit of great defense. And point USC. Sam called on that last play. Fantastic solo block on Alex Solgard, but is he able to recover? Alexis Solgard serving. 
former basketball player coached by John Stock. As long as we're talking legends and games here. And who is the Matadors? Who is coached by John Stockton? Alexis Holgard. I did not know. Yeah, that. Alexis Holgard. Basketball. She's out of Spokane. And John Stockton coached her for a bit. So she's getting the benefit of coaches in two great wow. sports. I'm glad you're listening. Thank nice you. Nice fact. Thank you very much. Yes. Schreier tried to make that work. Pizza Gola, backcourt, Bricio, Doug. Give you a little tip back coming your way. Ball is down for Natalie Allen. Another smart shot tip right over the block. Natalie Hagland, the defender, watch. She gets deep down the line, ready to dig the ball, and that's too far to run to get that ball up. Back from the right side, Weddens. Little tip there. Look at Hagland flies in. There's not another little girl in the country that gets the ball. Coming right back at you. Matador's not going to give it up. From the middle of a Hagland pass. Never say die. And Cal State Norwich. <laughs> Seth Sidney Gedry puts that ball right in the middle. Hagland comes up with it. And then Hannah Schreer for USC with transition kill out in the middle. People waiting to see if Natalie Hagland's going to go to the national team. Boy, I mean, I'm sure that they are salivating with the thought. She is so talented. Yeah. Ripped her whole block is Natalie Allen. That's one of the best swings we've seen of the night for Natalie Allen, who had a little bit of slow start offensively, but her coach, Jeff Stork, said good things happen when she touches the ball. That's a huge compliment that is coming a from him. Huge compliment from a three-time Olympian. Good use of the block. And you know, Holly, the thing that USC hasn't been able to get going yet in the middle. That kill that we saw, I'm sure it was the first kill off the set to the middle. That's a good stat because they've been very effective out of the middle. Back behind the setter again, and Bricio. Samantha Breeze at that time left all by herself as a bucker, but made a nice move with her right hand to seal the net. Timeout called by Jeff Stork as USC leads by six. USC hitting 400 and they're holding Cal State Northridge under two. Welcome back. Set one underway of this round two of the NCAA women. USC leading Cal State Northridge. It's a Southern California matchup, basically. Cal State Northridge in the Big West made some big noise this year, getting as high as 21 in the rankings. They fell back out of top 25, Holly, only when they lost to Hawaii. Hawaii, one of the better teams in the country. I think they finished ranked at number 12. So not a loss that you know should really knock them out of the rankings. Yeah, no, I agree. Plus they beat Hawaii earlier in the year. Such a talented team is Northridge. And we're seeing as they're holding their own here with some great passing. And lots of success on that one in particular. Casey Hinger, again, Samantha Brito lined up to stop that, but able to turn it just enough to find the floor. Heine, serving. Haglin passes. Ball again. Hey, if it's working, go to it. Kalisti Northridge is committing two blockers to slow down the right side attack and then transition fast against one blocker for USC. Those are good numbers in Cal State Northridge's favor. So what kind of adjustment would you expect to see from USC? Anything? Well... <laughs> Put, keep yeah. pushing the ball up to the pin. Samantha Brice right now, that's her fifth kill on nine swings hitting over 500. After Ebony Wondo had that big night last night, Cal State Northridge wanted to slow her down and they've been effective so far. 
Ball back to the pin, and I think that Hanger was thinking all the way to the pin. Yeah, it was all the way. It is set point, USC. Just a little misconnection, unfortunate timing between setter and hitter. Hagman serves down the line, Northridge out of distance. And very offensive minded Gendron with a kill. That's her third kill, and that's what Coach Jeff Stork said about her. They expect about two to three kills from City Gendron. She's a setter, but offensive minded point scorer. Bricio, solid pass, gets a chance to hit it. Takes some speed off it. Oh, the ball handling error will end set number one. Matadors fought mightily, but in the end, USC came out on top in set number one. This time, Samantha Bricio, five kills. Well, eight points is a big difference. It's hard to win a set against a team like USC with eight hitting there, but that's an impressive number. Zero for USC. Cal State Northridge, I think should be confident after that first set. They played tight, made too many hitting errors, but right there in that first set with 19 points. A lot of success for Northridge behind the setter in set number one, something we can expect to see. Casey Hinger had five kills. She was very effective, as was Natalie Allen with three kills. We apologize for the technical difficulties you guys may have noticed that we've been having. We're still waiting for set number two to begin. Set number one went all USC way, but Cal State Northridge did a few things that were really effective and good in set number one. Well, for one, they put two blockers in front of Ebony Wanabu on the right side, trying to slow her down. And defensively sat right in the locations where USC likes to attack. First kill from Sarah Shaw on the right side. That ball set wide and off. It's Sarah Shaw known for taking very smart swings for USC. I think opponents haven't known what to do with Sarah Shaw this year. For a while, they served her, that she passed perfectly every time. She can hit a little everything. Haglin gets a touch on that ball, but it was wild. Northridge defending and transitioning very effectively for points. Mahina Aina back to serve now for Northridge, one of the captains and seniors of this team. Crumb, boy, she sends that out. Back, Brasio swings again. to mix it up a bit. Matadors aren't going to let anything drop. Free ball. So smart, Samantha Bricio finds the spot. Well played.
play ball by Samantha Brizio, but every point is hard fought by Cal State Northridge. I like these kind of tests. I think they're good for you, especially early in the tournament. Yeah. I was just thinking the same thing. I mean, it's, it's good for both teams. For Cal State Northridge, a win today would be, you know, program making a real huge moment. For, for USC, they've got a lot to get out of this matchup as well. Absolutely nice to be pushed. Nice to be defended and played differently. Played against different types of hitters. All win-wins for both teams. Haglin laying it out. Bricio going to take another swing. Ball hit the antenna. First hit in the air for the USC team all night. That's amazing that their first hitting here comes a few points into the second set, but that's how strong they have been today as Sydney Gibbon serves. Block waiting for Wanabu, and she's got strength. Give credit to Seth Haley Crone for USC getting that ball, bettering the ball, bump set. This ball's tight, but Ebony Wanabu, six foot four, she has a good chance on that tight ball, wins it. Wanabu's serve is ace. Ebony Wanabu gets back in the service line, very focused, and pops it. Not easy to serve a libero, get an ace, especially off Kelsey Rondazzo. Another tough serve from Wanabu. Ball goes outside. Olgard. That's... And Ruggins gets the kill. How about an assist for Alexis Olgaard? Alexis Olgaard turned around very confidently. That's something McHaley has his middles do. Transition set, and there you see why. Pays off Elise Ruggins with a kill on the right side. Wanabu serve, catches the top of the net. USC leads by three as Alice Pizza Segola comes in. Watching McHaley and Ebony Wanabu, he said at the beginning of the year, one of the things that works so well between his, his relationship with Wanabu is that she can get an answer out of him. McHaley likes numbers. He'll give you exact reasons why he does things. He said he's a good match with Wanabu. She likes that. Mauricio, nice pass. Oh, they got her off the line with a mill attack. USC had two blockers in that vicinity, but a seam in front of the hitter. They did not close that block. They were committed to it and then just did not execute. And as a result, they got to wait five more rotations to get Samantha Mauricio on the back line. As you mentioned earlier, Holly, her serve hasn't been a factor yet today. Shaw with a kill. Sarah Shaw, again, taking smart swings for USC. You need a player like that on the court. Olgaard serve is short. And the kill from Heine. Mahina Heine, number 10. For Cal State Northridge, effective swing. Alexis Olgard left in backcourt for a dig. That was her fifth kill for Mahina Heine of Northridge. Bricio. Oh, Bricio from the backcourt. Beautiful pipe execution from USC. No block. Cal State Northridge choosing not to block that. That's the second time they pulled out of the block. They just want to stay down and dig it. Ollie, why does Samantha Bricio's swing look so much more smooth than so many other people's swing? It does, doesn't it? 
Samantha Mauricio <laughs> is a very fun, smooth player to watch. She's very technical, very effective. Her arm is fast. She's smooth, and that's why it's fun to watch the best athletes perform their sport. Pass perfect. A little tip for the setter and mishandled by USC. Sydney Gedrin, setter for Cal State Northridge. That's her fourth kill of the night. Yeah, and, and Jeff Dork said three to four kills per set, which seems like an awful lot to ask from a setter per set, but he says, as you mentioned, one of the preeminent point scorers in women's volleyball. One of the preeminent setting point scorers. Uh-oh. Want to be salivating over that one. Very tight. Smart. Stay Northridge battling with their defense in transition. This ball dug too tight to the net. Mahina Heine, 10 in red, throws it down. Back through the hole that was closed beautifully by Hanger. Hit. Come on, hit. The other way, Hanger behind the setter. Coach McHaley telling his team, the USC Trojans, to hit the ball. A lot of tipping going on, but Casey Hanger, the junior middle blocker for Cal State Northridge, executes with some power. And particularly Bricio, we haven't seen her tip this much, including from a back row attack. Shaw, she's hitting. And Heine through the block as they close the gap. It's 10-9 USC. Look at, there's a scene between the two blockers. Mahina Heine attacks it, number 10 in red. 4-0 run for the Matadors. Sarah Shaw now back to serve, and Matador sticking with their system. It's working for them. They're passing, looks solid. And that attack behind the setter, Holly, is still flummoxing the Trojans. Casey Hing, very effective. She's got one blocker in front of her. Hans Schreer pulled out of that one because she was late. Casey Hinger very effective at putting that ball down with one blocker in front of her. Pass is off. Bricio is dug. And there's the middle. Schreer, another kill out of the middle. Hannah Schreer in transition, making herself available. Very effective. She's been the best middle of the night for USC offensively. They're going to keep running that play behind the setter. Beautiful set. What an amazing set from Crone. And a net violation. The Matador is back within one. Cone. That's Olgaard. Doesn't that be pretty to work? That's Alexis Olgaard's first kill. Ball is high. She's got two blockers in front of her. Fingertip kill. Not a lot of power on that one, but effective. Yeah, we're just not seeing USC run the middle very much tonight. They're not in system as much uh, as they usually are. There's the middle coming the other way. Hagel sets Shaw. And the decision-making by USC, Holly, just doesn't seem as 
autopilot as we've seen earlier in the season. You can hear Mick Haley unhappy with some of it. And give credit to Cal State Northridge. They're making USC uncomfortable, and that's the goal. That's what you want to do, make them uncomfortable. Take them out of their comfort zone. Samantha Bricio goes back to the back line again to serve so far today. She's got two service errors, and it hasn't had much time back there. Oh, that's a serious heat on the ball. Here it comes. Samantha Bricio, that's her first. I like calling an assist yeah, for Alexis Olgarden, her second kill of the night. Jeff Stork takes a timeout. You've heard about icing the kicker. Well, he's going to try to ice the server and have Bricio cool off during the break. Welcome back in the second set inside the Galen Center, USC leading by three USC. Oh, they've been here before. Look at the NCAA tournament history of a really storied program. Absolutely, USC known as one of the best programs every year, a threat to win the national championship. Bricio serve, pass, feels more like dig. Sarah Shaw takes a swing and here comes the Matadors from the right side. Ball is out and Vicio will stay on the back line for her third serve of this series. Wow, Natalie Allen sees the opening short over the block that time, just missing it wide. Great idea. Ball is long, no touch. Another timeout for Jeff Stork and the Matadors. You can't, you can't let a team like U.S. get too far ahead. You want to stop their momentum as soon as possible. A 4-0 USC run. Bricio served three of them. Welcome back. Second set underway. USC leading by five. Coming up at intermission. We're going to give you the latest on Chris Peterson taking over as Washington's new football coach. We're also going to hear from Todd Graham and David Shaw on tomorrow's big football game. Meanwhile, Samantha Bricio takes to the back line again. Holly, for a lot of the year, they just left her alone. They didn't tell her where to serve. Now things have changed. Well, she was joking with assistant Tim Nolan. Aren't you going to tell me where I'm going to serve? So now he gives her an area. But she likes that 5-6 seam, but they just let her go after it. Five six seam. The five six seam. The court in serve receive is divided into six parts. One being right back, middle back being six, and left back being five. And that's right where you saw that ball go between areas five and six. Ball is turned the other way and out. Cal State Northridge actually passing the ball okay, but taken out of system. So Northridge adjusting. Now they're going to have four passers just to give Samantha Brisco another look. Brisco is just ripping it. Six straight points off of this serve. That's not what we normally see from her down the line, but that one had the same pace as that 5-6 that she loves that time, area one. Wow. And you see her there talking to assistant coach Tim Nolan for a moment. And to get back to the story, he's now talking to her about it. She said, look, you're telling everybody else where to serve. I think she felt a little left out. Well, she did feel a little left out, but I think they're like, hey, why mess with a good thing? Go back <laughs> and continue doing what you're doing because she has 75 aces this season. Yeah, if it makes you feel better, okay, I'll tell you where to serve. Serving the open court. 
But this is what has really made USC able to separate themselves from opponents all year long. It's the serving and scoring runs. Well, not only the aces, but the kind of pressure that puts on the other team. They get tons of easy overpasses, shanks, taking the opponents out of system. And that's such a weapon for any team. I asked the man Bricio when they were playing UCLA about a week and a half ago, what do you think about? And she just thinks, I'm just going to go up and hit it as hard as I can. <laughs> this is the second time out during Bricio's serving run right now during the time. And lots of teams have tried to ice her, make her think about it too much. But she's used to this. Coach Jeff Stork is doing all he can to slow down her momentum. Now it's left up to the team on the floor. And you point out they went from three passers to four passers. We've seen a lot of teams do that during year two. Now it looks like they're going back to three passers. Every coach, when we ask them before the match, we talk about the team. Every coach, when they get to part about Bricio's serve, give a slow nod of their head. I mean, there's only so much you can do with a 50-mile-an-hour serve like hers. Well, they don't want to be stuck in the wrong passing rotation against her because it could be deadly. A service error there after serving six consecutive points. Matadors need to jump on the opportunity right now. Pass is good. Pieces to go. It goes to Mill Olgard. Five is open. Five. Come on, Elise. Come on, Elise. Middle. A little bit of broken play there. And Sarah Shaw, always reliable. Olgard tries to shut it down. Longest rally we've seen in the match today. Olgard trying to put it away. And it gets past the block, and the Matadors get the long rally point. Fantastic dig by Cal State Northridge to keep that rally alive. And then Natalie Allen, number nine in red, ends it. Kelsey Randazzo, the libero, a junior from Western Carolina. Ruddens. Oh. Smooth. Fourth kill, hitting 500 on the night. Elise Ruddens, number 11 in white. Just a freshman, high volleyball IQ. Getting it done on the right side for USC. Taylor Whittingham's serve is good. Ball's getting away a bit, and another point. Western Carolina having an old guard coming back in. Here we go, here we go, Brittany Graff comes in, senior from Canyon Lake to serve. Her serve goal at Bricio, as they have done all day long, and it's overpass kill. Nothing more frustrating for a coach. Well, <laughs> Cal State Northridge has a good complaint. Alicia Pizzasigola, the freshman setter from Italy for USC, went up and touched that ball. She jumped. And they were right. The umpire, Tony Chan, overruled and said he saw a touch. Well, he didn't overrule. He just let them know he saw a he touch. He just reported it. Bricio. And again, it's Ruddens on the right side. So effective. Off the block now. Ruddens touches it. And a broken play. A ball handling error called against the Matador. I've been impressed with the swings that Elise Ruddens has been taking on the right side. Just a freshman, but making some big plays for USC. Back to the right, and again, more success from the right. Natalie Allen. Natalie Allen, she averages almost three kills per set. Big hole in the block at that time. Actually attacks through the block of Sarah Shaw. 
Allen back to serve now. Eglin's pass on money. Schreer kill out of middle. Hilly Crone and Han Schreer feeling that connection center middle blocker. So important to establish that middle attack. Back from the right. That ball wide, no touch. Katie Hinger was very successful earlier in that match with that same play. That time just unable to get on top of it. Set two, match point. And a crushing kill from Heine. Credit Sydney Edrin, quick ball out to the antenna. Mahina Heine finds a way to put that ball down. Not a big blocking game today. Northridge, no blocks at all. Two blocks for USC. Bricio. Here you go from the other side. Chrome puts it up, and now it's Haglin. Wanabu off shoulder, and it's a three ball for USC. Schreer comes through again. Set two goes to the Trojans. Hannah Schreer so effective. Her sixth kill, hitting over 600. Beautiful transition out of the middle for Hannah Schreer and the USC Trojans. Yeah, USC goes up two sets to none here at the Galen Center. Matadors giving their best shot, but USC is still strong with so many weapons. Mick Haley joins us now, Coach. The one thing that Northridge has had consistent success with is their attack from the right side. What can you guys do to slow that down a bit? Well, I think we can serve a little bit better. I don't think we're attacking the zones that are asking the, the kids to attack right now. That would be one thing, but uh, I think that uh, they're pretty good at that particular part of their game. They were very good last night with that, so I think everybody's having trouble slowing them down there. Are you surprised at some of the things that Cal State Northridge is doing defensively against your team that's working? No, I think, uh, I think that's why they're, they're good and that's why they're here. They play good defense. I think we could do a few more things and I'll be talking to them about that at halftime. Thanks so much, Coach, for okay. your time. Thank USC you. up two sets to none against Northridge. Hitting three at 29 for the set. And, of course, Samantha Bruzio having a day, as is Hannah Schreer out of the middle. Schreer may be the difference maker. Hitting 667. Welcome back to Galen Center, Cal State, Northridge, and USC. About to start the third set. USC leads two sets to none. Hi everybody, Anne-Marie Anderson alongside NCAA champion Holly McPeak. And Holly, this is about what we expected, a good Cal State Northridge team, but USC defending home court. Well, I think Cal State Northridge has really pushed USC. They played them hard defensively and made USC work hard, but USC is responding. Yeah, they have, especially their middle Hannah Schreer, who's been a great match so far. We don't talk about Hannah Schreer a lot. She's a workhorse, but she is getting it done. Six for nine swings. Hitting 667, very effective to end a lot of rallies in both the first and second set for USC. Yeah, and on the other side, we knew that Ina was going to make a difference for the Matadors. Number 10, Mahina Heine, so good on the outside. 8 for 13, hitting 538 against a very strong defensive USC team. Yeah, and of course, this is just one of the matchups going on around the country right now. We're in Southern California trying to take a look at this region first. And you can see this matchup. Hawaii now getting underway with their action. Arizona State and BYU are actually just tied up now at one set apiece during their intermission. So there's a match to keep an eye on. And the winner of those two matches will be here in Los Angeles next weekend for the regionals. And up north in Northern California, Stanford beat Hampton last night. Right now, Stanford leads Oakland. A two six to none, and how about Colorado? A big win over Iowa State to advance. They hadn't been in the tournament, Holly. Colorado has since 2006, and Iowa State has been a strong program the last five six years. And big win for Colorado in the Pac-12, and then Minnesota as well expected to win that match. 
Yep. And then going all the way up north, Washington and Alabama State in progress right now. The winner of that match is going to play LSU. And you can see that Creighton advanced, Kansas advanced. So really interesting volleyball going on around the country. And of course, Arizona had a win over New Mexico State Day. Utah had a win over Yale, Cal over North Carolina, Oregon over Miami. They're going to play in Nebraska next, Holly. That's going to be real tough. Very tough in Nebraska, correct? Yeah. That's a really knowledgeable fans in Nebraska. A really loud arena. It'll be a great chest. Set three underway and a little bit of a disconnect. And Holly, what adjustments can Northridge make? I mean, they're playing pretty great ball. Well, I think they're playing really good ball. They just need to break down USC, serve a little tougher, keep USC uncomfortable and out of system as much as possible. Now, I thought that was a really uh, smart point that you made. You said they made USC uncomfortable because we did see USC do a few uncharacteristic things in the first couple of sets. Absolutely, and that's that's where good coaching and a strong volleyball program at Cal State Northridge comes into play. They're doing a good job playing smart volleyball. We hear McHaley yell, hit it! Because he feels his team's tipping too much. You know they're uncomfortable. Wanabu, though, she's uncomfortable. Ebony Wanabu on the quick set out of the middle. She's very capable. We don't see her get that set very often, but powers it down. She hits such a heavy ball. McHaley said at the beginning of the year, yes, she's special, but I have to admit she's not surprising me at all. He expected to have her be the difference maker that she is. Sam Call, 6-1. Not the biggest middle, but she gets up and has such a nice quick arm swing out of the middle for Northridge. Kelsey Randazzo serving. The service error there, as you can see, they're trying to go over an area. They try to make Samantha Bricio handle every ball today. Well, Samantha Bricio carries a big load all around for USC, so they're probably trying to fatigue her and take her out of system. Ebony Wanabu serving. Back, there's a the block waiting for him. Bricio's blocking today. So Samantha Bricio doing a good job getting those hands over the net ceiling. Olgard late getting there. If she would have, Allen would have tacked a little bit more seams, she probably would have had success. Wanabu serve pulls Northridge out of system. Hina dug by Bricio. Haglin gives it back. What a use of the block by Bricio. That ball was set a little bit low. Samantha Bricio got there quick, got her feet there, able to tool the block out of bounds for USC. Runs Olgard and Bricio up front for USC with Wanabu serving. Middle attack goes just a little bit long for calls. The set's low. Cal State Northridge trying to get that middle going. Sam Call is such a weapon when they can get her going offensively. 4-0 run for USC while Wanabu has been serving. Happen again, flies in. Ball pushed outside. There's a roof waiting for him. Alexis Olgar did a fantastic job getting there, closing the block to Lise Reddins. Mahina Haina know, Mahina Haina know where to go. A 5-0 run for USC as they are up by five. Some adjustments coming from Matadors. Tomorrow, the only place for the most in-depth Pac-12 football championship coverage is right here on Pac-12 Networks. It all kicks off at four with the exclusive pregame show where we get all the insight and analysis from our team of experts to get you ready for the showdown. Then immediately after the game, recap all the action with the postgame show. Pac-12 football championship coverage starts tomorrow at four, only on Pac-12 Networks.
here inside the Galen Center. Third set underway, a 5-0 run by USC. And they've been dominating at the net as of late. But Holly, it also comes down to attack errors. Big difference. Cal State North, there's 19 hidden errors. USC, only three. Wow, that looked like an ace, but just missed the back line. Wanabu comes out. Yeah, that's about as close as you'd ever want to let it go. And it's an opportunity for Brittany Graf and the Matadors. Down by four. They make Bricio handle the ball as they have all day. Old guard from the middle. Back from the right. Ruddens. Get your groove on. Elise Ruddens, five kills hitting the red 500. Good looking swings. Still really strong attack from the right side. Ebony Wanabu not putting the same type of number she did last night. Here's Brucio serve. It's a rocket. From the right side, that's taken care of by Natalie Allen. Natalie Allen made a great adjustment. She's been tipping her the block. Natalie Hegland scooted up for the tip. Natalie Allen attacked deep line. Smart swing. Allen puts up a great serve. Take USC out of system. It's a free ball to Northridge. They go to that same play that McKaylee says we get a lot of opponents fits. Casey Hinger, good off one foot, only one blocker. Old guard late getting there, so she just stops, steps herself out of the block to get the tip. Hinger's got eight kills today. Great pass from Haglin. And that ball wouldn't work, never went over. Cal State Northridge did a fantastic job scouting. They're in every location that USC likes to hit. They don't have any stuff blocks, but they're getting good defensive block touches in direction. And again, behind the center, Hanger. It's interesting. Every time USC, their middle blocker, does not get out to close, middle blocker pulls out to get the tip and leaving that middle part of the court open behind mid middle front. It scores every time. So is this set for Cal State North Gedrum seeing the middle blocker there and that's when she's going or is she just going? Well, I think it's a combination knowing what USC does and executing. And are you a little surprised they, they haven't adjusted USC at all? I mean, that same play keeps scoring. Well, Northridge is doing that to SC. I think Coach McHaley, after this match, they're going to find a way to make a better adjustment. Waterboo comes back in up front with Schreyer and Shaw. Haley Crone serving and setting. Stinson is. Kiana Stinson with her fourth kill. It's been a little bit of a quiet night, but she gets up and attacks Steve hard for Cal State Northridge. Heine, Hinger, and Allen have been the kill leaders for the Matadors. Wanabu unfurls her arm to get set this high. And again, Sarah Shaw, steady as they come. Love the roll shot that just drops in the middle of the court. Pass goes astray. Rico pounced on it. Somebody finally returned the favor to Samantha Riccio. She gives that to everybody else constantly. Sarah Shaw returns the favor, assist Shaw. Tough ball. Haglin puts it up, goes outside to Bricio. Bricio, one blocker. Rips it. 
Samantha Bricio loves to attack the seam between those two defenders. That went perfect right in the middle. That's her 10th kill. 10 kills and six digs for Samantha Bricio. Looks like Natalie Allen has a cut, so the trainer is putting a band-aid on it, and we'll get back to action. While they're attending to her, Jeff Stork and McHaley take a moment to talk with their teams at the side of the court. Jeff Stork in his 12th year with this team, uh, telling us he really likes the chemistry of his team, likes them having time. You were mentioning how loose the team was yesterday in a really tight match. Absolutely. You can tell he's a positive coach. 12th season. Winniest coach in program history. Co-coach of the year. And then 2011, he was the coach of the year in the Big West as well. Back again. That successful play. Bricio gets a part of it, as does Wanu. Oh. Wanu puts some big pressure on from that side. Shaw. Another long rally. Bricio waiting for it. Oh, Hanger is so good up there. Casey Hanger, she swings out of the middle. She swings on the right in transition. She sees a little window of opportunity down the line and takes it. Hanger's got 10 kills on the night. Kill leader for the Matadors. Outside. Haglin digs it. It's come over though. Allen thought she put that down. Middle. That is down. Sam Hall is a dangerous weapon. Number 15. Look at Natalie Haglin. Just first an overhand <laughs> dig, and then it looks like an easy kill, and she lays down, gets on that one, too. Ball out of play. And again, Sam Shaw, steady, quiet, reliable. Sarah Shaw, you don't see her hit that pipe that often, but effective attack at right back. Sarah Shaw hitting 312 on the day. Just one attack error today. Old guard laying in wait, but got used. Alexis Olgard was all over that, but a little turn of direction. Sam Call gets the kill for Northridge. Bricio passes, ball goes back to Wanu. Oh, tough angle with Bricio waiting right in your face. Smart by Allen to keep that ball just in play at that angle. Ball are flying. Good efforts, but balls. I'm impressed by the Northridge cover. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of big cover plays, second chance opportunities. There you can see Tim Nolan, the assistant coach for USC, giving the serving cues to Vinny Wanabu. The block of Ruddens and Olgard. So solid. Go the other way now, Bricio. I know that Haley's thinking, hit it! The ball was at a little bit wide. Samantha Bricio could not get her feet around it. Raff back to serve. Cal State Northridge hanging around within four here in set number three. Oh. 
Ball is wide, no touch point. Matt Horse. The first hitting air for Elise Reddins. On the right side, Northridge putting a big double block in front of her that last play. Ball is down by Olga. Four kills, she's four for eight. Hitting just a little over 500. Ball set high enough. Powers it down. Bricio back to serve. Northridge going with four receivers from the start here. Ball is served long. And it's interesting, no other time to call them receivers other than passers, but for some reason she's serving at such a kind you feel like you're receiving. As you mentioned before, Olgard also with an effective serve, but she's going to come out actually. Taylor Whittingham, a serving specialist for this, comes back. She's a freshman out of Rancho Santa Margarita, California. Back behind the setter. That one cut a little too sharp by Hanger. Casey Hanger, I thought that was a nice set. Just could not get on top of that. Tried to hit an impossible angle in that particular set. Timeout called by the Matadors. They're hanging around, though. They're still within five. The USC, though, controlling it. Just five hitting errors by Trojans today. Welcome back to the Gillen Center. Third set underway. USC, the sixth seed in this tournament, leading set number three under the direction of head coach Mick Haley. Fiery coach. Just a really uh, strong tactician and a statistician as well. Likes numbers. He loves numbers. I've been really impressed with the type of athletes he's brought into this USC volleyball program. He just continues to reload with talented players who want a title. Yeah, I think he really relates well to the athletes at had. I mean, he's coached the women's game for many, many years. Got a couple of national championships, and he takes teams consistently to the postseason. Outside, Sarah Shaw. <laughs> Good heat. Whittingham put that ball up. Rizio from the back court. If it's a ball handling here. Double hit call. Look like, look like the setter, Alice Pizzascola, the freshman from Italy. Just a little indecisive on what ball she was going to run there. Dreher, the other way. She's having a great day. What a pass by Samantha Bricio. Just delivers it right to her setter. Hannah Schreer with her seventh kill. Big production out of number 14 in white. Yes, seven kills, no errors on just 10 swings. It's, it's like the night we saw from Old Guard last night, but from the other middle. Used off the hands. And that's really the key, Holly, isn't it, to USC? You think you're controlling one, you think you're controlling Wanabu, and Bricio goes off on you. You think Olgard's having a more quiet night, and Schreer gets hot. More than just one weapon that you have to defend when playing SC. Wanabu off the block, spins out. Wanabu with the kill. USC has reached 20. They won the first two sets. They're up by five here in set number three. Winner of this match is going to face the winners out of the Hawaii. The game's being played in Hawaii right now for this Los Angeles region. Northridge has to do a better job of controlling those balls, especially at the end of this third, third set if they want to stay alive. So smooth from Hanger. It's her 11th kill of the day. I like that play. Both Sam Cole and Casey Hanger running a double quick two major weapons for Northridge. 
Alia Casino, sophomore from San Jose, California, serves. Beautiful set out the other way. And Schreyer gets another kill. That's eight kills. Hannah Schreyer on fire. Fun to see. She's a hard worker. She deserves it. Yeah, last year Schreyer had the mono earlier in the year. She, you know, took a long time to get back in shape, certainly because the mono just completely depleted her. So it's nice for her to have the season that she wanted to have and be healthy. That is a big block. Ebony Wabu and Alexis <laughs> Olgaard standing in front of you when you're out of system is not ideal. 6'5 and 6'4? No, yeah. not good. <laughs> Here they come again. There's that quick arm from Dan Call out of the middle, number 15 in red. Such a weapon when used effectively and when they can stay in system. Bricio passes. Omar having some fun in the middle, and it is match point USA. Olgard with her fifth kill, reestablishing that middle connection for USC. Northridge has given USC a lot of different looks, had a lot of success on the right side, but too many hitting errors today. Off the block, Haglin chases it down. Bricio, balls wide, no touch. It remains match point for USC as Graf serves. Olgard. Set goes outside. Haglin digs it. And that's the setter who goes up, takes a shot at it. Broken play the other way, but Northridge not done yet. Now they're done. Tricio finishes it off, and a sweep by USC to advance. Watch Samantha Bricio come inside to hit this ball. One blocker in front of her turns it. Sharp angle for USC. With just six attack errors in this match, USC played with great control and composure. Well, I think they responded well to the pressure that Cal State Northridge put on them. And that's what the NCAA tournament's all about, being tested by different kind of teams that you don't see often. A sweep by USC. Taking a look at the brackets, USC is going to advance. They're gonna play the winner of these matches going on in Hawaii right now. Hawaii and Idaho State and Arizona State and BYU battling it out. I think the Arizona State-BYU game is really interesting. I'm interested to see who's going to match up with, I, my guess is Hawaii in the top region. USC, part of the Pac-12 that's had great success all day today and right now the matchup going on in Hawaii. Today it all went USC's way as they sweep Cal State Northridge to advance. For my partner Holly McPeak and our entire Pac-12 crew, I'm Ann Marie Anderson said so long from the Galen Center in Southern California, Washington Volleyball coming